saw it too. What are the odds? What are the odds? Hey, Tommy P, what are the odds? I'm back. I made it. I have returned from Dragon Con in one piece. Physically, nope, I don't even think I did it physically. Mentally, definitely not. So maybe I just lied. Maybe I did not return in any one piece at all. Maybe I returned in a new piece, a different piece, a piece that I didn't even go to Atlanta with. But regardless, we are back. It was a good con. It was a good con, man. It felt different. I don't know why. Uh, talking to some other friends there, they, they, they kind of felt the same. Can't quite put our finger on it. Uh, one thing I will say, oh, a few things I will say. Come on, when have I ever said one thing? If you believe that, then you've just either never met me or don't listen to the show. Um, a few things, man, about Dragon Con 2022. Uh, it was hot. Not outside. Like, the weather was fine. We usually get nice weather, man. Like, Labor Day in Atlanta is usually nice. Um, it was the hotels. Like, I don't know, man. I think they were having, like air conditioner issues or something uh the 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 little tunnels the habit trails were hot the the panel rooms were hot especially uh in the digital media track where where i kind of do a lot of my work um and a lot of times i just like to sit down there and listen to a panel and you know support my friends or see some new panels it was hot dog like like it was a it was a chore some of my friends are listening to this hey, look man they know they were there too you know, I'm not hurting anyone's feelings. It was a chore. You'd go, you'd be like, cool, let's uh, sit down and have a little snack or something. Oh, God, why is it so hot? I want to leave. I was like sweating. You shouldn't be sweating when you're sitting, right? That's not normal. And so, yeah, I think I think that was the big the big thing for me this year that, that kind of just frustrated me. Like I said, a lot of the panels were, were hot. Maybe it was some of the rooms. You know, those hotels are gigantic. There's like five hotels. So I don't know if it was, you know, a specific hotel or a certain section. It might have just been our section. Who knows? But again, if I didn't mention it already, it was hot. But that's the worst thing. That's literally my biggest gripe and complaint, which is nothing, which did not take away from the fun. Uh, I had an opportunity to uh, moderate quite a few panels this year. Uh, and it was fun. I, I always, I enjoy it. And then I wonder like, oh man, am I in too deep? What am I doing? And then I get there and I enjoy it. And it's a lot of fun. Uh, this year I did a costume contest. Uh, that, that, that's fun. I've always wanted to do one of those. Uh, they're just long. There's like 80 contestants and they all have a story they want to tell. And you got to read it and just dry mouth, just dry mouth, extreme because it's so much reading and it's always like, you know, I know a lot of movies and pop culture shows. I don't know all of them. And I swear these folks go deep, like in the deepest realms of, of geekery. Actually what it is, honestly, I, I am into a lot of stuff. I do know a lot of stuff, but not like fantasy. I've never gotten into like dungeons and or dragons and or elves and orcs and Lord of the Rings or anything fantasy like of that element. Nothing wrong with it. Just, I don't know, just not for me. So there's a lot of like fantasy games and fantasy books. I'm like, I ah, look, man, I don't know. I don't know. You're lucky. I know the witchers from he's Geralt of Rivia or something. That's the extent of my like fantasy knowledge. I sort of now and then I'd get tripped up on that. But again, not bad at all. It was a lot of fun. Um, I had a panel with uh, Brian Michael Bendis, who's a huge comic book creator, uh, that didn't get put in the app. It was a mistake. Things happen. Um, he showed up uh, somehow. I don't know how he knew. Uh, there were like four people there because they happened to just stumble in. And so we just hung out. I, I, like, I, I was like, hey, man, there was an issue. You know, I apologize. Uh, if you don't mind. He just say hello for five, 10 minutes. There's a couple people here and then we'll be on our way. We sat there for an hour, man, just talking comics, just talking comics and Miles Morales and TV and movies and the state of 
like comic movies and things with Brian Michael Bendis and David Mack, who are both big time uh, comic book creators and artists. So that was my highlight. I've never, you know, I've moderated a lot. I've sat next to people and that's all cool, but never in like a little circle, <laughs> like a little, a little powwow, just chit chatting. You know, man, it was the coolest thing. And so kudos to him for doing that. He could have showed up. David Mack could have showed up and been like, nah, we're not doing this. This is below us. You know, we can go be making some money or something. But neither of them did that, man. They hung out, answered questions, had a had a fun conversation. I right, what else? Uh, got there safe, got back safe. That's always an achievement. And I don't know. There were 101 other things. If you've never been, it's hard to explain the 101 other things. If you have been, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Hey, I hit the wrong button. So now I don't know what we're going to do. Let's see. If you haven't been, it's hard to explain. If you have been, you know exactly what I'm talking about. All right, we are back. We got a story this week. Kind of appropriate, I guess, for for Dragon Con. Uh, If you were a teen in the 2010s, I was not, or at least knew one. I don't think I did. Well, man, we're off to a bad start. Anyway, you'll know that a vampire obsession, thanks to Twilight, Vampire Diaries, and more, was an essential part of teen personalities. Nope. I watched none of those. I've never seen Vampire Diaries. Um, I think I watched one of the Twilights finally recently, like within the last year. Maybe the first one. I don't know. It was the weird one. I don't know. They were sparkly and running through the woods. Um, then there's the other show. It's the Sookie Stack House. What is that? Tr- uh, True Blood, right? That was a big deal. The first time I went to Dragon Con, I remember like, I don't know. So yeah, I don't know. I don't get into, I don't know. I just don't do vampire stuff. But anyway, doesn't matter because one mom believes her daughter's obsession with vampires led her to being stalked by one. What? Is that all it takes? I have some obsessions. In the TikTok video, oh boy, (laughs) which is not regulated. In the TikTok video, the woman claimed her daughter had been bitten by a vampire. All right. The woman explained that this incident of a vampire biting her two daughters happened over the course of two years. I don't want to call that lady a bad parent. But how do you let two kids get bit? Like, I don't know people that have a ton of kids. None of their children have ever been bit by a human, an animal, or anything. Yet over the course of two years, both of your kids got bit by a bat or something? What? All right, two years ago, my youngest daughter woke up with marks on her neck that looked like vampire bites. After discovering the bite marks, the youngest daughter experienced some symptoms that included sleeping all day and being unable to stay in the light. Well, I mean, that's me. I do that. I can sleep all day. I don't like the light. Am I a vamp? Maybe I'm a vampire. Was I bit? I don't know. That would explain so much. But anyway, at first, they didn't think it was vampire bites. Well, of, well, why? Why? Why would that be your first thought? And they even reached out to doctors. Eventually, the bites faded after about a month. And the family members thought that was the end of it. All is clear. All is good. The bite marks are gone. If a vampire bites your neck, I feel like it's going to be a bad wound. Not just like, oh, it looks like you got bit. Anyway, a month later, the oldest daughter had the same bite marks on her ankle. Come on now. Come on now. I haven't watched a ton of vampire movies. I've watched enough to know I have never seen or heard or read about a vampire biting some people on the ankles. There's no blood down there. Is there like, is that where you would go? Is there a, like an artery or something in your ankle that I don't know about? That sounds like bed bugs. That's what I think it is. I think this lady had bed bugs or chiggers or ticks. I was like, well, I don't want to admit to that. I'll, I'll just tell him it was a vampire. But anyway, let's see here. She had bite marks on her ankle. They were faded as if she was bitten the same time as my youngest daughter. We just didn't notice it. 
So I, I think now she's saying both of them got bit. One got bit in the neck. One got bit in the foot. After a year, the woman's oldest daughter experienced the same bite marks on her arm. The woman explained the bite was changing and it was not going away as if she was being bitten in the same spot multiple times. How are these chicks not waking up? I don't know. I've, I don't think I've been bitten in my sleep. If I have, I have some questions. Uh, but like, I feel like I can, I can hardly sleep as is. You ever hear like the toilet running? You're like, oh, I'm awake now. Well, so much for sleeping. Or somebody like kind of move in the bed like, oh, well, I'm up now. How do you get bit on the arm, foot, and neck multiple times and not wake up? Do the vampires, do they do a thing and like put you to sleep? I don't know. I've never seen that. All this time, the woman thought this was just happening with her children. However, her oldest daughter later told her, that her husband was also experiencing the same bites. Wait, what? So the oldest daughter, how old are these girls? Are these grown? Like, are they grown? The oldest daughter, her oldest daughter later told her that her husband was also experiencing the same. But yeah, so it sounds like the daughter's husband. Oh, come on, man. So you're in the same bed. How are you laying in the same bed with your wife, letting her get bit up by a vampire? You know, what were you doing? After all, after all this, after all the stories, where else would you go to figure out what's up with the vampire than a psychic? The woman went to a psychic. The psychic then claimed <laughs> That the woman's oldest daughter was being stalked by a vampire. The psychic patiently understood all of the woman's problems before giving any advice. That doesn't make any sense. She said, well, let me meditate and see if I can find out what this is. So apparently she went away. She did whatever she does. She meditated. Then she got back to the woman and said, it is in fact a vampire. The psychic elaborated further and claimed that this vampire wants the woman's daughter. This then begged the question, why is the vampire biting other family members? Is that the question? That's the question. That's what you guys were wondering about. Not why, what are these bites? I'm telling you, somebody got something gross. Some calamine lotion or aloe or something on it. So the question is, why is the vampire, if the vampire is obsessed with the daughter, why is this vampire biting other people? Well, according to the psychic, if the vampire only bit the daughter, she would die. What? So I guess he's like, you know, he doesn't want to put all his eggs in one basket if he just keeps taking the blood from this one person. She can't survive. I, that's not how that works. God, there's more to this story. God, I thought I was done. I'm over it. I'm tired. I keep thinking, I'm like, all right, well, that's it. That's funny. Ha ha ha. Some joke. And then I can go, but no, there's more to the story. The woman <laughs> claims the vampire was there to stay until he could take the woman's daughter with him. The psychic further claimed that the woman's daughter was the one who summoned the vampire. Oh, boy. The plot thickens. So the vampire's there. He's like, hey, man, I'm going to take this girl. I'm going to keep coming back, biting all y'all till, till I get this girl. I'm assuming she's a grown woman. I don't know, man. It almost doesn't matter. However, here's another left turn. The psychic said, hey, actually, it's your daughter that summoned the vampire. So that's kind of on her. And the daughter was like, nah, that wasn't me. And the psychic was like, no, it was you. I'm telling you. And the daughter's like, nah, I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't call some vampires. So <laughs> the psychic, I think, explained some years back, like when she was a teenager. Oh, nope, nope, nope. This is the daughter. The daughter explained some years back, like when she was a teenager, she was obsessed with the show True Blood. 
See, the one with Snooky. No, Sookie. Snooky is Jersey Shore. Sookie, Sookie Stackhouse. Just like any teenager, the woman's daughter too glamorized vampires and their powers. However, there was nothing further than that. The woman believed the psychic. She thought that if she didn't do anything, the vampire was there to stay. All right, so this is quite the buildup. Maybe, maybe not. This young girl was obsessed with vampires, and by doing that, she then summoned the vampire. The vampire is obsessed with this girl, woman. So it says she was a teenager four or five years back. So I'm going to say she's 20. I don't know. I don't care. So that she summoned the vampire. The vampire is obsessed with her. The vampire, not wanting to kill the woman he's obsessed with, is kind of nibbling on everybody to, I guess, get his blood and his snacks and not kill the one girl. So now what? Now, what do you do? Welp. All the family members then began praying to find a solution to the issue. The woman said, we prayed and we asked God to intervene. He did. And there have been no incidents since. Are you kidding me? That was it. I'm not here to to comment or or... Uh, uh, deny or approve the, the power of prayer. But I will say, if you are somebody who, who pray, prays on an issue, I would have thought you would have started there. How do you go to the psychic? How do you go to the psychic before Jesus? You know what I'm saying? Hey, man, we got a problem. There's some vampires. Who can we turn to? Well, <laughs> I can I can talk to some friends about it. We can go to the psychic. And if all else fails, <laughs> we'll consult Jesus Christ and see what he has to say. Meanwhile, Jesus is like, dude, you should have came to us first. We got this sorted. No more incidents since. <laughs> <laughs>